Uh oh, there goes the hatch. There's my hatch. All right. <laughs> Every time, there's my hatch. guys we have a whole table of parts here <laughs> it looks amazing dave you've been printing for the last month yeah yeah it's uh i think 123 hours of printing time cool so the neat thing about this is 3d printed planes build fast but take a long time to print now dave you've been using our lulzbot machines and actually doubling down on two machines right yes yeah two machines pretty much running around the clock yeah. we've got a nice plane though it looks beautiful this is possibly the biggest 3d printed plane we've ever built and printed here and also it's the first biplane too yeah and it has a ton of detail a ton of detail the rivets the lines everything looks incredible so we're going to be we're going to be assembling this we're going to divide and conquer right yeah yeah um i don't know do you want to handle the uh, fuselage and i'll start doing I would one love of the to do the fuselage yeah absolutely and then the last two pieces here and here are printing so hopefully by the time everything else is done these will be ready and then we can start assembly. Let's, Let's do, it. do it. So this is Eclipson's first biplane and so far it is going together great. Uh, same techniques as they've used in many of their most recent ones where we're using pushrod wire. Same pushrod wire we use on the swappable series to act as guiding rails and also extra strength. This really helps you just be able to perfectly line up everything and also keeps it incredibly strong and seen together. All right, I only have a few more sections to glue on here. In the meantime, Dave's working on the wing. Okay, so I'm working on putting together this new Eclipse and model. The lightweight PLA we use is phenomenal. It, it prints really nice, it's very light, and very strong. So it comes in a variety of colors. We're using the white and red for this plane. Um, the, the cool thing about the lightweight PLA is uh, the higher the temperature you heat it up to, the more it foams up and it becomes lighter and it acts more like a styrofoam than it does a plastic. All right, the fuselage is all done, tails on here. So before we put this together, I'm gonna go ahead and take this and mask this off and paint this. One really cool thing about the lightweight PLA, it takes paint really, really well. I think it takes paint better than it actually takes decals, to tell you the truth. Uh, but also, it's a little bit sandable because it's more foamy material, less plasticky. So I can take a piece of worn sandpaper. I had a couple of glue globs I didn't like. I could sand those down. My next step here is I'm gonna mask this off, take it down to Pilot Institute, and give it a paint job. It has been a long, long road, but this is the last piece that we had to print for the S12. I'm gonna get this cleaned up and we're gonna get it put together and do some paint. So dad, where are we? <laughs> All right, so we're at Pilot Institute Hangar, and as you can see, a lot of stuff is changing here. We've been working hard. Uh, we're gonna be working over the winter here to finish this off. This is gonna be where our workshops are. We're gonna have our paint room in the back so we can actually throw some better paint. Right now, we're painting here. We found a fantastic, perfect match for the uh, lightweight PLA red, and that is this right here, satin apple red. And Dave, you're taking the rest of this can when we're done, right? <laughs> yeah, coincidentally, it's the same color as my bus. <laughs> there you go, he has some touch up paint. What'd you get me, Josh? I got you a finger. It's a basketball, isn't it? It's a All right, so we finally get an excuse to put a big motor on a 3D printed airplane. This is our new 2814 motor. These are used for a lot of John's Warbirds, but also we got some big planes coming out that are big slow flyers. This 2814 is gonna be a new motor coupled with the DSC to fly that. I wanted to make sure everything mounted up and, and matched perfectly so it's easier to screw in. The neat thing about this new motor mount style is it separates all the pressure from the thrust and gives a huge amount of surface area. 
So now that we know it fits, all we need to simply do is glue this in. The thrust angle and everything's already established. So what are you doing, Dave? I am stringing up fishing line onto the Eclipse and Pits. Um, it adds a lot of strength to the wing, so that way we don't have uh, folding wing issues. Nice. So after this, what do we have to do? Um, we got to finish up a little bit with the electronics, and we're ready for a test flight. Nice. So we're adjusting the flexion on all of our control surface, and I think what this is called is a slave strut right here. The problem is, is if you go too much deflection on this, watch what happens. That's not good. So what we're going to do to fix this, we're going to move the push rod in closer to the servo screw. That's going to give us less deflection, but keep our resolution of the servo the same. Now you can adjust travel, but if you adjust travel down too much, it's going to give you a really poor resolution on your controls and make this plane fly kind of jerky. So we're going to go ahead and move the push rod instead. Now one of our thoughts is, is maybe if you're hovering this and you get full deflection, if there's no airflow to keep this push back, it may hyperextend and kick in, especially if you're doing a tail slide or something. What we did is just cut a little piece of push rod, sunk it in about, what do you think Dave, about three millimeters up? Yeah, around uh, Right into the main strut. And that way what will happen is you can still get your full deflection, but it's kind of a nice resistance to keep it from going any further. I think that's probably pretty good actually because it just touches it. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's so satisfying. <laughs> so I think the only thing in hindsight we probably would change is we picked the one, uh, we picked the option with the push rods. Right. Yes. Um, un unfortunately, um, our push rods are a little too thin and they cause a little bit of a wobble. What we did to fix that is I actually took a piece of foam and I put that inside there so the push rod doesn't have the ability to wobble too much. So we'll just keep an eye on it and see how that works out and stuff. But I'd strongly recommend if you're gonna use a 2814 motor which has more nose weight, put the servos all the way in the back end. All right, our last step here is we're gonna go ahead and check our center of gravity, put the battery in it, we're ready to go out and fly. Oh, that part's too loud. All right, so for the batteries here, we're gonna have a good long flight time here because we're gonna be using two 2300 four cell tattoo batteries in parallel. This is gonna give us plenty of nose weight and at the same time, a real long flight. All right, JPX, how do you think it's gonna go, bro? Yeah, I'm optimistic. I have not flown an Eclipse plane yet that didn't surprise me on how beautiful and crisp it flew. So I'm, I'm very confident there. The five pounds of weight, the four point, what, nine? Yeah, somewhere around there. All up weight, that's crazy for a lightweight printed plane. I'd say if you go lightweight or PLA, don't do PLA. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> but uh, I think it's gonna fly good. I think it is gonna definitely carry a heavier wing loading, uh, which means you're not gonna be able to do things like fly it off the prop without being an established pilot. Um, but one way to find out. All right, while Josh is wrapping up getting the pits ready to fly, um, I wanted to give a shout out to our uh, sponsor here at EcoFlow Runway. Um, they keep hooking us up with all kinds of nice stuff. We got a new runway, lights, pavilion. I mean, they're, they're doing a great job. Go check them out. All right, so right, left, up, down, left, right. I think we're ready to fly, man. Right. You ready for this? Now, we got a lot of sun right there, and we got a sun I got to miss there. Okay. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> you ready, Mike? My youngest son, Michael, is following. Let's do this, bud. Here we go. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> well, and if you guys notice, anytime I'm flying a 3D printed airplane, I'm getting less and less anxious. And that's because they all fly awesome. And this one flies awesome. I'm, I haven't put a click of trip in this, by the way. Now, I can feel that weight a lot more. I'm just going to fly slow for a second. Not off the prop, off the wing. I don't want to stall it out. That's not bad. What do you think? It looks like it's nice and smooth. Yeah, and we got probably easily 15 mile an hour wind here. And she's handling beautiful. All right, Mike, hold on. I'm going to do a fast pass, bud. Looks great in the air. Oh, she is beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to kick my throws up here. Uh oh, there goes the hatch. There's my hatch. All right. <laughs> Every time, there's my hatch. Luckily, I can print another one. <laughs> All right, first thing I want to do, I want to take it up nice and high. I want to see if I can do a blender. All right, you ready? Three, two, one, and rudder. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Inverted's just fine. 
Oh, Mike's gonna like this. So I'm not an advanced 3D pilot, but that's a hover. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, I'm gonna do a touch and go. Yeah, that motor has a ton of power. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so I'm actually cruising under, uh, under half throttle. <laughs> I like this. This reminds me of a lot of the gas uh, biplanes. It carries its energy real well. We'll go ahead and bring her in. I'm trying to break it and she's not breaking. So those, uh, those strings really did the job. Dave and I had a running bet whether this would be enough to hold it together and it had no problem whatsoever. Even fighting this wind, look at that. Yeah, it is very, very important to add the fishing line though. Uh, oh. I don't think we would have the same outcome if we didn't. No, not at all. <laughs> All right, I cannot believe it. It's in one piece. Yeah, yeah, it flew great. It flew really good. And you know, we were really concerned about those wings. That fish line and stuff really adds a ton of strength. Yeah, um, very, very important. You got to make sure you add it. Yeah, don't neglect that. Also, make sure your center of gravity is right because that is definitely a crucial aspect with this. 220, 250s up in the very front of the nose works fantastic. Okay, we're going to leave a link in the description down below. So if you like the plane, uh, go grab yourself one. And let us know what Eclipse and model you'd like to see us print out and build next. Till next time, we'll see you. See you guys.